the upcoming course that I'm teaching called Authentic Market Discovery is the most important course I've taught in over a year. And it's important for three types of people. See if you relate to any of these three types. One is people who are unsure what to offer in their business, what to sell. Maybe you are just starting out in business or you have tried different things and you're so unsure what to sell. Okay. Clarity is what you need, right? The second type of person is one who already has the clarity and has already been selling services or programs, products, retreats, um, typically services, some kind of transformational service. And you're not getting enough clients. You are out there. You may even be posting on social media regularly. You may even have an email newsletter, but you're doing things and you're still not getting enough clients. So lack of sales, second problem. Okay. Third type of person is someone who has plenty of clients. Okay. However, you are savvy about business enough to know that the market keeps changing and you want to stay sharp and connected to the changing market trends. So staying sharp is the third, third issue, third, third problem. Authentic market discovery is the process that solves all three problems because whether it's lack of clarity or lack of sales or lack of staying on top of market trends, the solution is always to reconnect to your market again. And by doing that, what I mean is not it, market discovery is not, you know, we're going to go to Google or go to chat GPT and try to figure out what the market is. That can be helpful, but it is, it is way less helpful than having real one to one conversations with the people in your market. And what do I mean by your market? Let's get clear on that. Even those who are just starting out in business with zero audience, you have a market that you can reach. How? Okay. Your market is the spending of the people that you're able to reach at this time. That's your current market. It's true. Now, over time, your audience will grow and your market changes, which is why market discovery, this process and this practice is relevant again and again. This is something that I still do to this day. And every time I don't do market discovery and I launch a course, it often fails because yet again, the market is not. So let me tell, let me tell you why even so-called experts like me who are marketing, you know, who are in the marketing game and we're supposedly really connected and understanding the market. Why do even experts continue to fail? Because whether you're a beginner or you're an expert, you tend to be quite passionate about your area of expertise, right? Like something you either trained for or something you created, something you've studied or, or you care about some particular topic. And the more you care about a topic, the farther away you tend to get from your market because your market by definition, right? Remember it's the spending of the people you can reach. They aren't studying your topic the way that you're studying your topic. That's why they consider you an expert. If they were studying the topic as much as you were, well, you wouldn't have as much to provide to them, right? But the fact that You've been passionately studying this topic, this issue, or this series, this kind of grouping of topics for years probably means that, okay, you're weird. <laughs> I'm weird. Each of us are weird because we are so passionate about our thing and it tends to make us disconnected from what people actually want. Now, we think we know what they need. <laughs> Right. We say, no, no, you've got to buy this service. You've got to buy my service. You've got to buy my programs, enroll in my, um, you know, offerings because this is what you need. And they're like, well, I don't understand it. I don't. And that's your job is to understand them 
rather than saying, well, you should understand this and you should, why aren't you buying it? You, you should understand it. No, your job as a business owner, well, you're taking on the marketing hat. Well, I mean, I'm assuming you don't have enough money to hire a marketing team right now. And you, you shouldn't actually, even though I have enough money right now to hire marketing people, I always keep doing market discovery myself because I need to, to look at the faces of my potential customers and clients and to talk with them. And the business owner doing that work of market discovery is essential because the business owner makes the big decisions on what direction the business should go in. And without that, like if you're, if you're relying on someone else to do the market discovery for you, they have the feeling of the customer that you have, you don't have anymore because you didn't come in touch with them one-to-one -one again and again. Now, I know some of you are already working with clients is why you have plenty of one-to-one -one interaction with my clients. No, one-to-one -one interaction in terms of the market discovery conversation. And that's what my upcoming course is all about. How do you, how do you get people to say yes to the market discovery conversation? Where do you find them? Okay. Even if you have, I promise you, this is something I can promise. Even if you have zero audience, you haven't started building on social media at all. You, you're just, you know, you're just starting out and you have no audience. You still can get market discovery conversations. And part of the reason is because in our course, we have a course community that will provide you the connections for the market research conversations. You'll actually be having some of those conversations with fellow students in the course and the people that they refer to you. So, uh, but some of you do have an audience and you're gonna, we're gonna show you how to get those market research conversations either from the community, from our course community or outside of the course community, number one. Number two, how to have those conversations what do you say when certain things are set back to you? How do you, how do you move the conversation towards a place where you really are understanding what they want at, the, at this time? And what they want isn't you saying, Hey, look at my service. Look at my sales page. Look at my product. Don't you think you want this? No, that's not what we're going to do. Because usually when you do that kind of thing, one, it can feel awkward and salesy. But secondly, it, um, creates this dynamic where they're just trying to be polite to you. It's like, oh yeah, your service looks great. Your product, I'm sure it's going to do well. And then when you later ask them to buy it, they're like, oh yeah, it's not the right timing. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not right for me or whatever it is. Politeness is a big problem that people often don't realize in market discovery conversations is they're, they're asking the wrong, they're putting the, the conversation in the wrong place where they're just getting the polite answers back. So we're going to find real answers. And then thirdly, very importantly, how do you then integrate all that intel, all that information you've gotten from these various conversations into something you can take it to the next stage, which is polling. The conversations is the first stage. Polling, P-O-L-L-I-N-G, taking surveys is the second stage. The people that you've had conversations with, they will often take your poll, but they might share it with other people Sometimes they do, usually some of them will, which then gets you more polling data to say, okay, based on my conversations, I've created these three different options. Okay. We're going to, we're going to do this all in the course. You're actually going to practice along with everybody else, myself included. We're going to practice the process. Conversations, we're going to practice that. And then polling, we will practice that as well. How do you do a poll? How do you share it? How do you analyze the results to then get clarity at the end to say, ah, this is what I ought to offer. So let me, let me give you, oh, first of all, let me give you this quote that I've always been inspired by. And funny thing is I always have to paraphrase a quote because I always don't get the right words. So please comment below if you know this quote. You probably know which, which one is coming. Frederick Buchner, uh, those of you who follow me have heard me say this quote a thousand times. Frederick Buchner, uh, he's a preacher, you know, old man preacher who, you know, uh, so this is coming from like the religious point of view, but you can just take it and, and, uh, um, translate it to your own worldview. He says, the place that God calls you to is where your greatest talents meet the world's deepest hunger. Again, translate that to your point of view. You might say where the universe 
is calling you forward into is where your talents meet the world's hunger. Okay. That sweet spot of your talents and the world's hunger is the market, is your market. It's what, it's where people will spend money with you. Okay. And, um, I'll give you an analogy that helps to understand this, this as well. And this, a lot of my clients have found this analogy helpful. It's the stream ladle analogy. So what happens is as you dive into your topic, you get training on whatever your modality is. You, uh, have passionately studied how to solve a particular problem or, or you just had this peak experience. And you want to dive more into the peak experience and help other people have this peak experience. Okay. Whatever it is, what happens is you tend to go up a mountain because you, you, you worked hard to climb the mountain. Okay. Of knowledge, of experience, of transformation. You climb, climb, climb. And now you're at the top of the mountain and you're at the top of the, you're at the peak of the mountain and you're shouting down at the people at the, below in the mountains. Hey, the view is beautiful up here. This is, the experience is amazing up here. You've got to come up to the mountaintop with me. And people at the mountain, at the bottom of the mountain, they're at the river. Okay. They're at the river at the bottom, the bottom mountain. And they're like, they can barely even hear you because you're so high up the mountain. Okay. They, and they hear you. They don't understand you because you're speaking in high falutin language that, that is, um, not what their everyday experience is. Even though you know they would love for you for, to, to they would love the experience at the top of the mountain. You are so separated from the spending of your market and offering something that they would easily spend on that they're, they're not willing to make the trip up to the mountain with you. So what market discovery is, is the process of humbling yourself a little bit to just take a trip down to the river where everybody is, where your market's at the river. And by the way, I, I, another way of saying is, there is a river of cash. The river is a river of currency. Okay. So imagine it's a river of energy currency. It's the spending of your market. They keep putting their spending into the river. Okay. This giant river of cash is flowing. It's always, it's always abundant. It's always flowing. It never dies down because, well, guess what? No matter how the economy is, people are always spending money on various types of things. And what you need to know is what they're spending money on. Because almost certainly some of what they're spending money on is related to the things that you would love to offer as well. Remember, the sweet spot between your talents and the world's great hunger. They spend money on their hunger. Okay. And so when you come down to the river and talk to the people at the river to find out what they're putting into this river of energy, river of cash, then once you understand you could take your ladle and dip your ladle into the river of cash as well. Okay. That's one, that's one way the story ends. The other way the story ends is once you talk to people and help understand their language and understand why they're putting all this energy into this river of cash, then you could say, Hey, I have a, I have a better way for you to solve your hunger. Come with me. And you take a group of people up to the mountaintop and they're like, Oh my God, this is amazing. You know, Thank you for coming down to the river to talk to us so that you understand, you understand us and bringing us to the mountaintop. And of course, once they're up there, they're going to come back down and tell everybody else as well. <laughs> okay. But you first have to do the market discovery conversations yourself. I still do it to this day. I still do it to this. I have 15 years of full time income in my business. I started in 2009. Uh, whenever you're watching this, I started in 2009. Uh, 2009, by the end of 2009, I was already having enough business to consider it a full-time income, 2010 da, 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 onward until today. And yet still today, I have so much understanding of my market. I still do the market discovery conversations because it's, it's that important. It's not just finding out information that you can find out through chat GPT or Google, or it's the feeling you get when you talk to them, the compassion that gets ignited when you talk to the people at the river, um, and the language you hear, by the way, the, the actual language, which, which you cannot find just by Googling or by talking to AI or whatever, the actual language that they're telling you today about 
what their wants are, not, not what you think they need, but what they're actually spending money on. Anyway, this is the kind of conversation we have. If this sounds exciting to you, I hope it does because I, I have seen over time that the people who aren't getting enough clients or the people who, okay, again, three types of people, people who are not clear what to offer. Okay. They're just beginning in their business. They have no audience, not clear what to offer at all. They need to have market discovery conversations. They, they need to basically find out the people they can reach. What are they buying? Okay. Second, people who are offering something, but not enough clients, they need to have market discovery conversations because part of the market discovery is not just getting information and, and igniting your compassion. All that's very important, but it's also creating allyship. It's, it's getting advocates for your business because by having the conversation, market discovery conversation, the way that we're going to do in this course, you, it's like you, you invite them to your side of the table and they willingly do that because human beings that you have conversations with, they want to help. Of course they want to help, but particularly a small business owner, particularly a freelancer, solopreneur, small business owner, they want to help you, but you have to let them help you. And so people who with, with not enough clients, market research, market research is what I used to call this market discovery conversations allow you to, and by the way, the reason I call it authentic market discovery now is through market research. <laughs> My people told me, George, don't say market research. That sounds too dry. They, you, we sound like we're going to look at spreadsheets. No, we're not looking at spreadsheets until later on when we're analyzing the survey results. But what we're doing is having conversations with people that like us and that we like. That's it. And these conversations are meaningful conversations. And you create advocates as a result. Anyway, and then the third type of person is people with plenty of clients like myself who, who, who still need to do market discovery because we need, we know the market keeps changing and we need to stay in touch and ignite our compassion once again. So, and, and to be humbled once again, right? So whether you are not sure what to offer, just beginning. Okay. Or you need clients soon ASAP or you have plenty of clients, but you need to stay sharp and connected to the market. Market discovery conversations, I think, are incredibly important. That's why I still do it. That's why I, I'll nearly recommend, I basically recommend or, or require, rather, I say, all my clients to do market discovery conversations, um, what I used to call market research. And even before that, I used to call them fan interviews, like interviewing your fans. But uh, that that was a uh, misnomer because a lot of people say, well, I don't have any fans yet. No, no, no. People you can al- People who already know you in life doesn't matter if you don't have an audience yet. You start with the people who know you in life and who, who are supportive of you in this life. So um, I hope that this is helpful. And I hope if this sounds interesting to you, if this genuinely sounds like something you want to do, well, I hope you join us in this course. Because this is a not just a course where I'm teaching you 15 years of experience of doing market research, market discovery, but... We are forming a community of collaborators, mutual support connections, where you can continue coming back to this course community again and again and again over the years to share your insights. You're going to read insights from others. You're going to connect again with your fellow peers who know very well the power of market discovery conversations and who will practice with you, who will help you get more people because some of their people are perfect to have the market discovery conversations with you and vice versa. So I hope you'll join us for this course and this code learning co-support community. Uh, If you have any questions, I hope you'll, you'll let me know. And thank you so much for watching.